Welcome to Citizens Forum. It is Wednesday, July the 31st of 2019. I'd like to start by thanking our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to start by talking about a very important uh, subject, which is something called 5G, which means fifth generation. My guest is Sharon Noble. Uh, and Sharon, you've been working on the issue of wireless communication, the health impacts, the privacy impacts for a long time. And here we are now, they're at the fifth generation. The fifth generation, yeah. that's right. And for people who see 5G, I want them to know there are two types of 5G right now that they're seeing. And I think the industry is deliberately trying to confuse us. The 5G that people see on their cell phones, if they have cell phones, which I hope they don't, and on their modems means five gigahertz. That's the frequency that's being used. We're not talking about that. <coughs> what we're talking about is the fifth generation of wireless technology. The first generation was in about 1980 with the big cell phones that only had made calls. And we've come through various upgrades, the various upgrades of the uh, technology. The most recent was 4G about 10 years ago. But it was all based on the same platform. 5G is not an upgrade. It's completely new. It's completely different. 5G technology has never been used on the public before. In fact, one aspect of it has only been used in the military as crowd control weaponry. And that's what they're putting out or will be putting out. Now, I want to show some people some, a picture here. These are out here already. This is a transmitter that is being put along our streets. It's being put outside homes, basically making your utility pole, your hydro pole, a cell tower. And let me show you how close it is to homes. It is right outside homes, mere feet from bedrooms where children could be sleeping. And these, maybe you can also show the distribution throughout the... Yeah, these things have started to be put out uh, about three years ago in Colwood is when I first saw them. And now they're basically everywhere in British Columbia. This is a map showing the distribution. And this is about, um, this is a few months old, okay. of the distribution in various parts of Victoria. And if people go on a website, this is our technical website, it is emrabc.ca. They can find out what's happening in their communities. Look under nodes at the top of the page. Okay, emrabc.ca. That's right. Dot CA. Now, should we be concerned that these little transmitters are now on basically one or two on every block? Is that the idea? They're being put up about every two to six homes. Now, the reason they're doing this is because part of the technology that they're going to be using is using very short waves. They're called milli waves that do not travel very far. They're very biologically active and they're very energetic, but they do not travel very far. So when you say biologically active and energetic, what do you mean? They are extremely high in pulses. And as we know from talking to various scientists, from reading studies, the high pulsations cause the most stress on the cells. And these pulse at a very high rate. They're very, very tiny, very, very short. And they pulse. That's why they're using them, because they can carry a lot of data. And these are extremely dangerous, and they've never been exposed to the public. And scientists are warning not only is it going to be very biologically active for humans, but also for insects, for trees, for all living life. And yes, we should be concerned. These are being put outside our homes without our being told. And we can't get away from it. It's going to be going 24-7, 365. Now, these little transmitters, which you showed, they're active now, yes. but they're using 3G and 4G technology on them. They hold multiple transmitters. OK. Um, TELUS is putting them up uh, right now. And they uh, contain many transmitters. And they are replacing the big macro cell towers that you see to some degree. They're putting these throughout our neighborhood so that they, they can get closer to us. They can provide us with, quote, faster service, even today with our 4G smartphones that are out there. And the faster service isn't really that much faster. It's, it's a misnomer. 
when five, but they have their own reasons as to why they want why? this. It sounds technology. sexy. You know, we're going to give you 5G. You're going to get faster internet access when in fact the internet access is going to be just a few seconds faster so you can download a movie maybe three or four seconds faster than you could do today. What it really is looking for is to be able to connect to the internet of things. Connectivity is the key. They're going to be connecting everything you wear, everything you own, everything you do so that they can keep data. The smart meters are going to be getting the data from things that we have in our home. Smart now, the appliance. smart meters, you mean the ones at BC Hydro and... That we were uh, forced to have. Yeah. Yep, yeah. those very things. They've got a Zigbee chip in them that is going to be gathering data from everything in our home. And my guess, and I've got nothing to base it on, my guess is that once 5G goes live, even those of us who have opted out will be forced to go active so that they can get the data from everything in our home. This will be sent through 5G, through the Internet of Things, through the five grid, through the cloud. So, you know, our data is worth a lot of money and they are looking to get our data. Now our data is one thing, but our health is something else. And yes. what are the health impacts? Of the health impacts are serious. And scientists are warning that this is worse than anything we've seen before because of the type of MelliWave technology that they're going to be using. But it's going to be cumulative. We're going to have 3G, 4G, and 5G. All operating at the same all time. All operating at the same time. And this in addition to all of the wireless devices you have in your home, the Wi-Fi, the smart TV, the Fitbit you're wearing, we're, we are going to be so inundated. Right now, the level of microwave radiation to which we're exposed is billions of times higher than the natural level. Even though it's completely different, and we, I don't want to make it sound like it's the same type, it's different, but it's billions of times higher. Once 5G comes in, it's going to be billions and billions of times higher. We will not be able to escape it. And they're even putting up satellites to reach the woods, the mountains, the oceans, where some people do escape. And when you say satellites, you're not talking about five or 10. I'm talking about thousands. Yeah. Elon Musk is going to be putting up between 12 and 15,000. Amazon is putting up thousands. And last week there was an article in our newspaper saying that the uh, Canadian government is going to invest in satellites. These are low-level satellites that are going to be beaming 5G everywhere. Animals, trees, people, nothing is going to escape. No living object is going to escape it. You know, you have to get the feeling that the people who run our world are completely and totally insane. And they just absolutely, they, we're always told we live in a democracy, we have a voice, we have this. They do this and they don't even tell us about it. They don't even tell us. Nobody's just asking. Goes on and on. Nobody's telling. They're making this, that pole outside your home a cell tower. And where before they had to go through a modest amount of effort to notify people and to consult with the municipality, now they're doing it and they're not telling anybody. Because Industry Canada's rule is, if you put a transmitter on an existing structure, you don't have to tell anybody. Good for Industry Canada. Industry Those corrupt. Canada. I mean, it's not their fault. They're just, you well, know, Well, their the job government. is to work for corporations. Yeah. Yeah. And Health Canada is the one who's supposed to work for us. Yeah. And it's not. And it's not. The fact is, Jack... And the politicians are supposed to work for us, and they don't either. So it's, it's from top to bottom. The whole thing is corrupt, and we're paying the price. And the media is gone too, so we don't, they don't, won't even talk about it. Well, the media, to a large extent, is owned by the telecommunication companies who are investing in this stuff. And we have to fight to get the information. They're putting these poles on our property. We own the right-of-ways. Municipalities own that right-of-way. This is not just for um, the sake of the cell companies. This is our property. And we should be getting out there and insisting that our local councils and our municipalities should be fighting for us. They shouldn't be sitting on their hands and saying there's nothing they can do. Is that what our local city councils are doing? Is anybody here locally doing anything about locally, this? Locally, as far as I know, no one is. Yeah. Because the, the mantra that you're hearing is, there's nothing we can do. Industry Canada is the boss, we have to succumb. That is so pathetic. What is wrong with these people? Fight for us. If we want you to fight for us, at least tell us what's going on. Ask 
us what we want. Do we want these things up on all of our streets? Are we willing to risk the health of our children and ourselves so a few corporations can make even more money? And if we're not w willing to do that, then fight for us, you yes. pathetic. And worse, I mean, not worse, health is the worst. But to top it off, cybersecurity. These things are made by a Chinese company called Huawei. And the government is just not doing a thing about it. Ralph Goodell had an article, an interview, and it was in the Times columnist today. And he said the federal government is looking at whether they should allow Huawei to do it. Huawei is doing it. That transmitter is made by Huawei. If you can get close enough, you'll see Huawei on the bottom of it. It's in every aspect of our grid. And cybersecurity is something we should not be messing around with. Well, to me, Huawei is no different than any American corporation or any Canadian corporation. They're all out for the corporation, so but, the whole thing is insane. But the cybersecurity is something different. But it's going, it, 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 you know, can you trust any corporation to oh. protect our cybersecurity any more than any other probably, one? Probably not. No, I don't think so. They're but all tied I, but I, to but the, the CIA But the fact of the matter is the government else. is sitting there not doing a thing, of course. saying they are, yeah. and we have to get on top of them. Yeah. Those people, we're paying them, and they do nothing. To get their vote, they say nothing. If they make you promises, you can be darn sure they're probably not going to keep them. And it's from the power of the people. We have to educate people, and we have to be willing to get out there and protest it. Now, people are fighting this yes. around the world. We don't hear about it, but... Yes. I heard recently somewhere in Belgium, the mayor of Brussels, a, Brussels. and said, I refuse to allow my people to be guinea pigs. Yeah. Areas of Switzerland, Italy, France, Germany are all fighting it. There are places in California that are banning it. We can't even get a politician. Well, I shouldn't say that. One mayor in Pitt, Pitt Meadows over in Vancouver area is standing up for his people. He wants to know it's safe before he will allow them to put it on their towers. On their can poles. he stop them? I think they can. These are on public well, where property. Where are our local city councils and, and our provincial politicians and our federal politicians? Do something. You know, I mean, at least tell us it's safe. Tell us it's safe if it's it is. It's not safe. It's not safe, but if you think it's safe, if they think it's safe, then tell us and let us challenge you. But there's nothing. It's like just dead in the water. They Give us a chance to at least protest it. They aren't, they're taking away our opportunity to be informed. We can't get it in the media. We can't get it anywhere except through our voices. Through rallies, we had a rally here on Saturday. We had ra several rallies in British Columbia. There were more than 200 in North America on International Action Day to stop uh, 5G. This is not going to go away. And we have to tell our councillors, they are the first line of, of action for us. Their job, the mayors and the councillors, have a right to stand up and say, this is our private property, this is our public property. And this is our citizens. Yes. So, I mean, just compare the amount of coverage given to these two killers who are hiding somewhere in northern Manitoba. Compare the coverage given to that story to the coverage given to the issue of 5G. And the reason, you know, they just will not talk about this and many other important issues because they don't want us to know. That is the total corruption of the media. They won't even so, publish letters. We, yeah. we write letters. To the? To the editor of the Times Columnist, to the Vancouver Sun. Daily newspaper, the Vancouver Sun. We write letters to every media yeah, outlet. They won't. They won't publish them. We write letters to our politicians. They won't answer them. I don't care which party it is. We've got stacks of letters that have gone unanswered. Yeah. I get letters every week from people sending me copies, and I share them in updates. Great letters. The people have taken the time to research and to write, and they don't. The, no politician will even have the courtesy to acknowledge it. Not even to acknowledge. Wow. Nope. So what can we do? Tell me, Jack. <laughs> I don't know. What I'm saying right now is. People need to get to their counselors. They need to talk to their friends and family about this. They need to get involved. There are so many groups now across uh, Canada. Ours is one. Stop Smart Meters BC is one. We're now devoting most of our energy now to fighting 5G because I believe it is tied into the Smart Meter program. 
We need to uh, get to Health Canada that is corrupt. They're using a standard, a safety standard that we're supposed to live by, to rest assured, that is not only antiquated, it never was protective of this type of radiation. We need to stop this. We need to get Industry Canada to stop working solely for corporations. That's their mandate, I know. But they're allowing corporations to do things that are dangerous. Like kill us, for like example. Like kill us, yeah. endanger our health. They are not looking out for Canadians. We need to get involved. And can Canadians can't just sit quietly. So I think your website address hopefully will be showing up on the screen so I'm people hoping. can get in touch with you. I'm hoping. Yeah. And I would uh, encourage people to get onto our website and also go on to emrabc.ca and check their areas out. Okay. See how many microcells are outside their home. And once they start looking at that picture, they'll see that they've got them all over the place. emr.abc.ca. Thank you, Sharon. My pleasure, Jack. And thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum. What we are doing is we are taking risks of the sort that no rational society on earth can possibly take. You know, you cannot simply look away from this and fail to act. But that's exactly what we're doing. In fact, we're running as fast as we can in exactly the wrong direction with 5G. So, um, yeah, okay, so let's, uh, I guess, uh, okay. So there are also DNA effects uh, which, uh, which, and we know, by the way, that human sperm is impacted by EMFs that we're exposed to every day. Uh, the DNA, you know, the DNA effects are produced in human sperm from uh, cell phone radiation, from Wi-Fi radiation, for example. Uh, and uh, and so, uh, you know, the the uh, you know th this is this is this is a major issue, and the question is. How much are we destroying our, our gene pool? You know, the, all the, some of all the, the genetic information that we have that we can pass on to any future progeny, if any, if we have any, and uh, you know that that will determine what their what their properties are. Okay, so that's that's crucial. And then there's lowered fertility, and as you can see, uh, and there are 25 reviews on that. Um, they uh, and you can see there's a whole series of different effects that are produced here, each of which lower fertility. We have reason to think that these are already far along in our technologically advanced societies. Specifically, um, the uh, uh, there was a review uh, published by Levine et al. as described there. The title is given there uh, in late 2017 which showed that sperm counts have dropped to below 50% of normal in every single technologically advanced country on Earth. Think about that. Um, reproduction in those same societies has dropped well below replacement levels. Uh, and, uh, and I've been predicting for a while, based on a mouse study that I, uh, by Magris and Zenos there, that we'll see a crash in reproduction to zero. Okay, is there any evidence for that? I think we're starting to see the first signs of such crashes, and these have occurred in three densely populated, high-technology East Asian countries. Um, and let me just say, each of these had, had among the lowest reproductive rates in the world before these crashes. Uh, they were below 60% of replacement levels. Uh, Singapore had a 31% drop in reproduction between 2016 and 2017. Macau had a 26% drop. Now, Macau is not a separate country, but it keeps separate statistics as if it were a separate country. South Korea had an 11% drop in reproduction uh, and had another 9%, approximate 9% drop in the first half of 2018. Uh, the South Korean government's been trying to stimulate reproduction because they know that their reproduction levels are too low, and as you can see, they totally failed. It's going in the other direction very rapidly. It's rare that you see these kinds of drops unless you have a war, a famine, or a major economic collapse. So these things stand out as being something that is very, very unusual in relatively good conditions. 
Um, so, and, and it's my, I, you know, I, I believe that it's highly probable that 5G radiation will push many countries over the reproductive cliff much more rapidly, possibly as much as 10 times more rapidly than would happen without 5G. So, um, you know, so, so this, again, we are taking risks of the sort that no rational society can possibly take. 